Welcome to Corn Dog Thursday. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name's Aaron. You can find me on Twitter at AKNazer. Welcome to Corn Dog Thursday, where you get all your Photoshop learning wrapped up into a little meat package, spun around with some breading, and then deep fried, baby. Today we're taking an image we shot a couple weeks ago of Avery. This is part two. You guys can catch up with part one where we actually showed you how we took the photo. Today we're going to go through in Photoshop Stylizer. We're going to be doing some really cool stuff with color. We're going to be adding some really interesting color blurs that are part of a, a color blur texture pack. That's a lot to say. Uh, you can find more. It's available uh, down below. You guys can actually just pick up the whole pack and then it's going to save you a ton of work and you guys can use these on any of your images. I'm also going to show you how to export it out and add some grain and make sure that grain is going to look right on the display that you guys choose to send it out on, whether it's print, web, whatever it is. All right, let's get into it. We got a cool episode. So here's our image of Avery. It already looks really cool. This is our backlight, which we're using, which causes this nice amount of flare in this image. And this is straight out of the camera. So all this that we're seeing is totally natural. Now, what we're going to do is kind of take these existing elements and enhance them a little bit. So it's going to look like this was maybe done on purpose. And we're going to bring in some colors and just make it a little more interesting. OK, first thing I want to do with this type of look, I want this to kind of have that like editorial, but still a little bit of colored look. We're going to desaturate this image. So not completely. I'm just going to go to my hue saturation adjustment layer. And I'm going to pull my saturation down a little bit. And there we go. Generally, when you're doing this type of work, like some deep color work with your highlights and your shadows, you don't want them to be too saturated, or it just looks like totally weird and off. OK, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to grab an adjustment layer. We're going to go up here to Levels. And now we're going to go to our channels. we got three different channels, a red RGB, which is just light or dark. It's a combination of these three channels. So kind of four options, but still three channels. We got our red, green, and blue. We're going to go to our blue channel. And I'm not going to play with our input levels here, because they're going to give us some funky, um, some funky colors going on. We're going to play with our output levels. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the output levels right here down. Um, basically, it's going to take the darks, and it's going to put more blues into the darks of the image. We're going to do this the same, basically the same thing with our lights. There we go. So we've got some blues now. And the opposite of yellow is, or sorry, the opposite of blue is yellow. So we're putting some blues into our shadows and some yellows into our highlights. Now I'm going to go to our red channel. We're just going to pull this a little bit to the left here. And that's just going to give us a little bit of a warmer feel. So instead of looking like so yellow, it's going to look a little bit warmer with the yellow. Now I'm going to go back into RGB, and we're just going to pull this a little off to the left, too. It's just going to brighten everything up. So we can see just one layer how much that affects this image. Now a lot of the time when you're doing this sort of stuff, you want to kind of play with the colors that exist in your image. And a lot of the time, the warm and the cool do play really well together. So this is going to work really well whenever you have something that's backlit like this. We've got a big light right back here. We can see it's lighting our subject's hair and everything. And we do have some nice detail here in our shadows. So that's going to work very well. Shallow depth of field, backlit, and nice detail in your shadows. Those three will play really well to something like this, where you can actually start to do some interesting color work. Now, with this hue saturation layer off and on, we can just turn this and pull down the saturation a little bit more. We can see before, it's just a little too saturated. It doesn't look as natural, especially in your skin tones. OK, so that's the first start of it. Now, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to actually bring in some of these color blurs. These are actually really cool. So these color blurs are basically, they're all photographed blurs. I photographed these using a shallow depth of field. And these are different colors that were placed in front of the lens with one sole purpose. They're very, very cool. And we're going to link to them below on how you can actually, uh, you can pick these up and then you can use them for any of your images. So I'm going to shift click on all those and I'm going to hit Command G. It's just going to group them together. And then we're going to move them over from this group over to our image. And uh, to get them all into this group, what I did is I went to File scripts down here to load files into stack. And then you can hit browse, choose all the images that you want to load into a stack, hit open, and hit OK. And it'll just kind of like open them up into a big uh, stack like this. So we're going to put them now, hold down Shift, and click and drag to put them into our group. There we go. Now this uh, document here, we can just close that out. We don't even need them. Because we brought everything we needed, all these different images are now on top of our image. They're on top of our, our subject. So what do we do with these? We've got things like on a dark background, we've got some like yellows. And the, some of these are relatively faint. But the whole idea behind these is you can change the color mode. It's going to take the darks away and just leave the lights. So we're going to play around a little bit. Let's make this visible. And I'm going to change this from normal down here to screen, which is going to make our darks invisible. But it's going to leave our lights. 
not only is it leaving our lights, it's adding a little bit of color. And this is interesting because it's not like you're grabbing a curves adjustment layer and just like dragging colors along there. Uh, that's not the worst thing in the world, but that does degrade your image. Uh, this, it, on the other hand, is actual photographic blurs of different colors, which is very cool because it actually adds to your image. This is more information. These are like straight out photographs. It's, you know, so it's not just like warping your curves and like pushing your histogram around. We're gonna change that from normal down to screen as well. And you're gonna have a lot of opportunity to kind of like play with these as you want them. Let's say we do like that there, but maybe I want it to be a little bit a different color. Well, I can use my levels here and uh, let's just pull these levels down. That's just going to make our darks a little bit darker. So because it's a screen blending mode, our darks are going to get darker, meaning they're going to disappear because darks don't show up when you're in a screen blending mode. Let's say I want a little bit more color there. I can hit command U and I can pull up my saturation and that's just going to add to the saturation of wherever I'm painting of, of this layer. So we can see now it's just a little bit more saturated. There we go. Let's try this again. And you can use these in combination with each other. You can choose to use some of them. You can, you know, use some in some places. In other places, if you don't like it, just hit the delete key and then you don't have to use it. Let's try this one as well. Screen. There we go. And that's some really nice detail there on the right side. I think we could use this on the right, maybe even on the left as well. But we can see it's just not dark enough. See, they're dark. That's where it's supposed to be dark. It's not dark enough. So I'm going to hit command L. It's going to bring up our levels. And we're just going to make the darks just a little bit darker. There we go. And hit OK. So we can see by bringing the darks darker, now you just pretty much see the colors. It's too saturated now. Whenever you change your histogram, change your levels, things like that, it changes other things. Like it just compresses that information around. So you're going to get like more saturation sometimes. So not a huge deal. Hit Command U and pull your saturation down. There we go. And we can still put a layer mask on these. These are just regular layers. We're just using them as giant blurs of color. So we can use a layer mask there. And there we have our color. You can change your opacity here. And let's see, I'm going to hit Command U on it again. And let's just see if I want to change the color a little bit of it. Maybe we're going to bring it more towards, yeah, a little bit more towards the warmer side. And then just put a layer mask right here. There we go kind of paint away over her face a little bit. So what we get is these really nice additions of color. Let's just lower the opacity on that. We're just going to keep going with it. You get these really nice additions of color that don't really wind up affecting your overall image um, as far as you know the information that's in the image. There we go. We'll add to that. It's just kind of fun to play around. Yeah, I don't think I want to use that one. This one looks fun. Why not? Normal, we'll change this down to screen. Adds a little bit of like yellow you can see right over there. Let's bring our levels up. Maybe darken that down a little bit. All right, and we'll put a layer mask on there as well. And you can see, I'm kind of just playing around. I mean, I have a rough idea of what I want. I want some like really nice, you know, colors to be working in this image. And that's, that's about it. That's all you really need to like know when you're doing this sort of thing. The rest of it is really just playing around and seeing like, okay, do I like, you know, do I like that there or not? Does, does it work for me? And you can use these in any kind of com combination you guys want to. There we go. That brings up a little bit of light. I don't think I need that one. Let's bring this one, change it to screen or lighten, or you can use things like soft light and color dodge too. These are going to be a little bit more intense. If you use some things like soft light and color dodge, you can move them around. You can flip them using, you know, your transformation tools. You can flip them upside down. You can do uh, just really whatever you want. It's very, very cool to be able to just kind of play around with these. Overlay, if you want to go a bit darker. If you do like the overlay, but it's too dark, hit Command-M and make it a little bit lighter. Command-N is for, um, that's for your uh, curves, by the way. There we go. And we'll just make it a little bit brighter. Then it's like, oh, that looks cool. Why not just do that? I don't know. You can make it quite a bit bigger. You can move it around. You can mask them. They're just totally normal layers that you can do really whatever you want. All right, looks kind of cool right there. Let's put a layer mask on there. And then I'm just going to paint white on our layer mask right over there, just for like a hint of that, which is going to add more color, especially right where we have our the hair right there. Cool. I'm going to move that over a little to our left and lower our opacity a little bit. And there we go. So we can see this group 
it's these random color blurs that kind of like brought together. They really do add a bit of interest to the image and um, kind of give it kind of that like warm, fuzzy feeling, which I dig. All right, here's our before and our after. Now there's one more thing that I want to do to this image before we send it out. I want to make sure because it's a cool look for it, I want to add some grain to this image. But let's check some things out. Our image size here, if I go to image size, our width is 5,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels. Now this is a pretty big image. And if you make grain on a huge image and then you rescale it for the web, what you're doing is you're gonna rescale all that nice grain as well and you're really not gonna be able to see it. So the big trick here is if you're going to put grain on your image, you wanna make sure you scale it down to the final size it's actually gonna be on the website. So here on flurn.com, right down below, our images are 730 pixels wide. So in order for it to look very nice down below, what I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna make a copy, I'm gonna scale it to with 730 pixels wide, and then I'm gonna add the grain to it. You'll see it's gonna make a big difference. Okay, so how do we actually do that? Well, first thing I wanna do is make a stamp visible layer. Let's just lower the opacity of that just a little bit. A stamp visible layer. Shift Option Command N for new layer. Shift Option Command E is gonna make us a stamp visible layer. Okay, now we're gonna right click on here and go to Duplicate Layer. I'm gonna choose New Document and hit OK. There we are. So now this is our document in which we actually worked on. This is just a totally new document. I wanna resize this because I don't wanna mess with my original. I'd like to resize the copy. Now we're gonna to go to Image, down here to Image Size, and I'm gonna choose my width to be 730 pixels wide and hit OK. You can see it gets quite a bit smaller. Let's just zoom in to 100%. That's a really nice looking image. I like it a lot. So let's add some grain to this and then we're gonna be done. Here's how we do it. What you wanna do is make a new layer, Shift Option Command N, and then hit Shift Delete or Shift Backspace or Edit and then down to Fill. We're gonna to choose to fill using 50% gray and hit OK. Now we have 50% gray layer. We're gonna to go to Filter, go to here to Noise, and we're gonna to go to Add Noise. All right, we, do, we don't wanna click monochromatic. I like some color noise in there. And Gaussian or Uniform, either one you wanna choose. Snooze on that alarm. Either one you wanna choose is totally fine. And your amount here, I wouldn't go too high up because it just kinda of gives you more contrast. Something right about there looks pretty good. There we go, let's hit okay. Now the next thing we wanna do is change this to soft light. That looks pretty good. We're gonna bring our opacity down. I'm gonna hit V and then the number three on my keyboard, that's gonna bring our opacity about 30%. 2 will bring it to 20%, 4 will bring it to 40%. You get the idea. If it's too much color in here, which I think, you know, this is just a little bit too much color, we're going to hit Command U now, and it's going to bring up our hue saturation. We're just going to pop the saturation down a little bit. I don't really like it monochromatic noise. I like a little bit of color noise in there, but we don't need it to be so saturated, so you can always desaturate after the fact. And if maybe you want it to be 25% visible, that's totally up to you. It's whatever works on the image. But I hope you can see with the resolution, good enough. I'm zoomed in. So here's clean and here's with a little bit of noise. I think this type of image does look really nice with a little bit of noise, a little bit of grain on there. Um, it's totally up to you, but this is a choice that I'm gonna choose to put on there. All right, so now that it's done, how do we save it out to the web? Shift Option Command S is saved for web and devices. We can choose here all of our options, JPEG, our quality, yeah, 60, 70 percent, that's probably good. You can see our size is 730 pixels wide. Our size on the internet will be 57 kilobytes. It even tells you it'll take 11 seconds to load at 56K, which no one watching this is using 56K, so maybe we could just <laughs> change our download speed. Jesus, who used 56K? Anyway, let's hit save there, and we can just go ahead and I'll stick it on the desktop for now. All right. Avery Couch 1000 Noise. This is my naming convention. I usually do what the name it is, how large it is, or sorry, this is not 1000, it's 730 pixels. All right, and the fact that I did add noise to it. There we go, let's hit save, and we are good to go, guys. So that's it. Editing the image, adding those colors, adding the grain and saving it out for the web. I hope this helped guys. And don't forget we have, if you guys want to pick up these samples of all of these textures, you can do so right down below. Thanks so much guys. We'll learn you later. Corn dog Thursday. Nom, nom, nom.